Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. What do we have, Crystal? Indeed, we do. Many things that are happening to update you on. So a, a major airstrike by the IDF and massacre in Rafah. We will take you into what they are saying, what the U.S. is saying, what the international fallout is over that. Also, a shooting incident between the Egyptian soldiers that are right there on the border and the IDF, uh, one individual on the Egyptian side dead. A lot of questions about what the hell is going on there and where that might lead. We also have yet another update for you on the great pier from the Biden administration. Now it is apparently fully sinking into the ocean. So great work there all the way around. Um, we have to bring you an insane interview from a Biden defender. Mm -hmm. You have to see this thing to believe it. I've never been more convinced that Biden is way behind in the polls and would definitely lose if the election was held today. Um, and we're also very lucky to be joined today by Dave Smith. He is going to give us an update on the Libertarian Convention. All kinds of interesting things happened there. Trump was there. RFK Jr. was there. They were booing Trump, but his fans were there. They picked a nominee. Interested to hear all of that breakdown. We're also taking a look at South Park's take. Yes. Way too accurate take and look at the American health care As system. usual, South Park uh, tells the real truth about That's what's right, delivering. <laughs> okay, let's talk about locals and about our premium members. We have several things that we want to make very, very clear to everybody. As we have made clear, this is only additive in terms of our switch. Is the YouTube link going away for premium subscribers? No. Is Spotify going away for premium subscribers? Also no. Unfortunately, Spotify's legal department has been dragging their feet and honestly making this entire transition a pain in the ass, even though it doesn't need to be. So we're going to do a workaround. We're going to include a link in the email for Spotify where you can still watch the video on Spotify. You get the uh, access to your premium show. We are going above and beyond in order to just make sure that you guys have access to that no matter what. It's a workaround while we get all this stuff handled with Spotify, but don't worry, we will never abandon it and it is coming to you. So check your in inbox today, you will have a link that will take you directly there to the Spotify app, and there you will see it. Uh, what else do we have? You are not losing anything. That's just the main thing that we want to make sure yeah. uh, that we drive home to all other people. Now, in terms of those who have uh, been having issues with their accounts, uh, I know there's only a few smattering. There's some interesting situations as to why exactly that's all happening. We won't bore you with the details, but no breakers will be left behind. No breakers will be left behind. Griffin is working around the clock on this. If you are having an issue, you need to email support at locals.com. And at this stage, go ahead and CC breakingpointspremium at gmail.com. That way we're looped in on that. And if we have any problems whatsoever, we only have uh, you know a few. It's like, it's very marginal, one or 2%. But obviously we have a lot of people, so that does add up. Go ahead and uh, send those emails if you're having an issue. Support at locals.com, CC breakingpointspremium at gmail.com. The emails are in the description of this video and on locals and on YouTube, wherever else you're watching the premium show. So let's get all that clear. Anything else, yes. admin? No, I think you nailed okay. it. Bottom line, if you're having any issues at all, support at locals.com, CC breaking points premium at gmail.com. And with the Spotify thing, we're confident we're going to get it worked out. It's just a matter of time. So this is a little temporary workaround. Yes, exactly. So if you like watching the Spotify premium feed, make sure to check your email. There will be a link there. So you will have all of the things that you have always had. There you go. All right, let's get to the show. We can put this up on the screen, as I mentioned before, a uh, airstrike in an area of Rafa that uh, the IDF had previously designated as a quote unquote safe zone. And you can see this area, which was filled with tents of displaced Palestinian civilians engulfed in flames. We know that at least 45 people have been killed. You see, I mean, some of the images here are horrific. Uh, you hear, here have a, a man who's holding up the body of a baby without a head. You have people who are laying on the ground. Hundreds, in addition to the 45 who were killed, were injured, many of them William, women and children. You can see here the sort of smoldering aftermath. Again, just to reiterate, this is the place that Palestinians were told was quote unquote safe. So there has been massive international condemnation. You even had a critical look at what happened here from mainstream networks such as CNN. Let's take a listen to a little bit of what their reporter Jeremy Diamond had to say on the scene. At least 45 people were killed after an Israeli airstrike targeted this camp for displaced Palestinians in Western Rafah, according to the Palestinian Ministry of Health. Plastic tarps engulfed in flames. 
sheet metal walls crushed by the blast. A block of makeshift shelters flattened in an instant. The Israeli military says the strike killed two senior Hamas militants who commanded Hamas's West Bank operations, Yassin Rabia and Khalid Najjar. In a rare move, the Israeli military's top lawyer launching an investigation into the strike, saying civilian casualties had not been expected. Mohammed Abu Atewi is one of those civilians, so badly burned that he cannot even open his eyes. But there are so many more. So many children writhing in pain. And then there are the parents desperate to save babies whose cries have been silenced, perhaps forever. For those who survived, whatever thin sense of safety they still had has now been completely shattered. We were sitting and suddenly there was a big blast and fire. People started screaming, Ranin says, describing how they spent the whole night pulling charred bodies out of the embers. While hundreds of thousands have fled eastern Rafa after the military ordered its evacuation, many others, like this man displaced from central Gaza, came here to western Rafa, told the area would be safe. Told the area would be safe. Um, I mean, just honestly, unimaginable what these people are experiencing. Let's put this up on the screen. This is a news report. With some of the details, this is BBC. Their headline is dozens reported killed in Israeli strike on Rafa. Um, few quotes from people who were there. Uh, one witness said, we were sitting at the door of the house safely. Suddenly we heard the sound of a missile. We ran and found the street covered in smoke. He said, adding he and others saw a girl and a young man who'd been killed by the blast. Um, another said his brother and sister-in-law were killed, leaving their children as orphans. Quote, the Israeli army is a liar. There is no security in Gaza. There is no security security, not for a child, an elderly man, or a woman. This, of course, comes on the heels of that ICJ uh, latest injunction. Ryan covered this as uh, breaking news over the weekend. They had demanded that the uh, Israeli defense forces, that they comply with uh, a ceasefire in Rafah. Now, the Israelis are claiming, no, no, they didn't really say ceasefire. The language uh, from that top court of the UN said that, quote, in conformity with its obligations under the Genocide Convention, Israel must immediately halt its military offensive and any other action in the Rafah government, which may inflict on the Palestinian group in Gaza conditions of life that could bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. We also had a range of shifting explanations for what the hell happened here. So we can put this up on the screen from the Israelis. First, you have the IDF bragging about what they had done here. Um, the original tweet from the IDF, last night the uh, IAF site carried out an intelligence-based precise strike that targeted senior Hamas terrorists in Tal as sultan that is the area that was hit. Contrary to Hamas's lies and misinformation, the strike did not take place in the Al-Muwasi humanitarian area. Well, no one said it was in Al-Muwasi, but it was in a designated safe zone. So originally they're bragging about it, saying, hey, we got the bad guys in a precise strike. Once there was really global outrage, including some very meek words, I'll, I'll show you in a moment, from the U.S. side, but some stronger condemnation from other uh, countries. Then you have Bibi coming out and saying the airstrike in Rafa on Sunday was a, quote, tragic mistake and adds that it will be investigated. Um, Sagar, I think hardly anyone could imagine that they really feel this is yeah. a, quote, unquote, mistake. When, of course, they've been broadcasting for months, they're going to assault Rafa. They've massacred already tens of thousands of civilians. The only reason they're pretending to have any regret here is because of the strength of the international condemnation. I think the international condemnation is a big part of it, but I also think that because it didn't even have an excuse and that all it was extremely well documented in terms of people were told to flee here, dozens were killed, and then their initial response just so clearly does not comport. It was a, very similar to the strike on that refugee camp. For example, about what you're saying, I have here in front of me, Emmanuel Macron, the 
president of France. Outraged by the Israeli strikes that have killed many displaced persons in Rafah, these operations must stop. There are no safe areas in Rafah for Palestinian civilians. I call for full respect of international law and an immediate ceasefire. So for the president of France, for the great European nations to be coming out to, uh, in this on top of ICJ, on top of ICC, I mean, we're just seeing a constraining of a lot of the international space that Israel was previously able to move in. You mentioned here the White House. We can put that up there on the screen. Uh, you know, I'm not really sure what else to make of this, but I'll, I'll just read it to everybody. It says, the de devastating images following the IDF strike in Rafah last night that killed dozens of Palestinians are heartbreaking. Israel has a right to go after Hamas, but as we've been clear, Israel must take every precaution possible to protect civilians. We're actively engaging IDF and partners on the ground to assess what's happening. So we're assessing, we're investigating. I believe the IDF says that they're investigating as well. Here is the thing, and this is why it exposes a lot of what's happening. You told people to move there, and then you said there are two Hamas terrorists there. It's like, okay, well, uh, in any other military in the world, that wouldn't even be a question, or at least any advanced military. We're mm -hmm. like, that's not gonna happen. Actually, if people are interested, uh, you may not even agree. I encourage people to go and read. General uh, McKenzie of CENTCOM just did a massive write-up of the uh, kill on Qasem Soleimani. Mm -hmm. Now, whether or not you agree with that decision, you should read it to see how the U.S. military military operates whenever it wants to kill a high value target. Again, even if you disagree with the strike, read the great lengths to which that he went to protect himself and surround himself with civilians and the extraordinary lengths that CENTCOM went to to make sure that when that strike occurred that there was uh, no collateral damage right. as a result of that. Now, that's why it's a very that I'm I'm putting that to show you that even if you have a hawkish view of the world, even if you agree with that strike, compare the way that the United States military does business compared to where the IDF does business. I was a Pentagon Corps responded in the room during multiple strikes on senior ISIS leaders. There was one particular ISIS leader uh, who they tracked every day for two years who would surround himself with children and women inside of a compound. He was watched by a drone and the guy knew it. He slipped up one time and it was in that one time that he was killed. Now, once again, it was a two-year operation that the United States military, not necessarily renowned for being you know, peace lovers or any of that, those are the lengths that we went to. And let me add this. This was under the Trump administration, under broadened rules of engagement. This isn't some Obama namby pamby nonsense. <laughs> not, like no, and, Obama was not just saying, pamby, but, but yeah. I'm saying you, they're, they're, I'm removing all of the possible objections yeah, that right, we could get to. Right, right, That's right. how America kills terrorists. There's a diff, there's a different way, and so even if. You know, you hadn't had all these people there and there were senior two Hamas terrorists and all of that. Ask yourself, is there any developed nation in the world that conducts military operations this way? And especially in the era of precision guided munitions of drone, they have total air superiority, they have control of the border, they have occupying the force, security situation. This is not a pure competitive nation. And just say, would any other military in the world would have pulled that trigger? There's yeah. a reason we won't. We don't pull that trigger, yeah. and specifically put the morals out of it. Even in terms of this is this is not how you uh, this is not how you're supposed to conduct yourself if you know your goal is to kill and eradicate a terrorist organization. As evidence, you know, I keep coming back to this, uh, the political report where U.S. intelligence that is openly leaking, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is openly saying this is creating more and more Hamas terrorists. And yeah. there's every indication in the world that operations like this, just like the U.S. military mistakes in Iraq and Afghanistan, only encourage that, and that's why we moved away from it, except the Israelis don't have an excuse, because they watched us make these mistakes for 20 yeah, years. Yeah, and that's, listen, yeah. that's not to say we were perfect during the war on terror, far from it. But compared to what they're doing here, they make us look like angels. Yeah, I mean, you we should read it. Before. You go read it. Right. Think about how, how much risk we took on to take out bin Laden. Mm -hmm. Bin Laden, the ultimate of the, the bad guys, the ultimate of the enemies. And we put our service members at risk to minimize the collateral damage and in fact, there was very little, you could say really none, given that it was, what, two sons and one, one woman. One of the wives, but she had a gun. So, you know, and, and, and look, this is one of those things, like compare you said. Compare that to here. Yes. They're literally bombing yeah. people in tents, people that they have forced out who have probably moved three, four, five times, who were told this was a safe area, bombing babies in tents. I mean, there's just, there's literally no defense for it. And Maybe they got the two Hamas baddies that they're well, they talking about. Anyway. We don't that's, even have that. We're just that. taking their word for that. We don't even know that they did that either. And, you know, of course, this is months and months and months into this conflict, into this all-out assault, where we've seen before the 2,000-pound bombs dropped on refugee camps. We've seen the hospital system. That's the other thing. You've got 
45 people dead, hundreds wounded. You saw in that report, I mean, you really, it's its horrifying to watch here. They don't even have a hospital system that can care for these people. In many instances, they don't have, we've, we've talked to doctors here, they don't, they don't have an anesthetic. These children who were profoundly burned, wrap your head around that. And it's because of the systematic destruction. And meanwhile, Sagar, to your point, mm -hmm. we know from our own intelligence that uh, Hamas has been able to gain thousands of new recruits over the past several months. Most predictable thing in the world, because imagine your brother, child, sister, mother, et cetera, is murdered. Do you think that's going to warm your hearts to the Israelis? Of course not. It only strengthens the argument that Hamas makes in favor of armed resistance. This is not justification certainly not justification of killing innocent civilians, whatever side of this conflict you're on, but use your heads. So we know Hamas has been, you know, the ideology has been strengthened. We know they have not been able to take out even half of the original Hamas fighters, let alone the new recruits. We know prior to actually this um, assault on uh, this these displaced people in tents, that Hamas have been able to fire rockets for the first time in quite a while. We know from reports on the ground, some of the battalions that have been, um, you know, sort of come apart before and had been assaulted and uh, hurt by the Israelis previously are starting to be able to reform. It's just, it's complete insanity and horror on absolutely every level. And so you ask yourself, okay, well, why are they doing it? Well, we know not only for BB, but for the entire uh, war cabinet, a lot of the people who had any sort of power going into October 7th, you know, they're trying to save their political asses. BB has every incentive in the world to keep this war going, um, both to try to hold his grip on power, also to keep himself out of prison because he continues to face corruption charges. But the other thing is, there's a real appetite, and we can't deny it, within Israeli society that doesn't see any of this as a quote unquote tragic mistake or regrettable at all. You had um, some of the government mouthpieces who are quote unquote journalists on uh, Israeli television networks who were celebrating this massacre in the most gruesome terms imaginable. Put this up on the screen, this is a report from Haaretz. Um, Happy holidays, right wing Israeli journalists celebrate Rafa attack likening it to Lag Bomer bonfire, the central bonfire this year in Rafah. Israeli journalist Yanan Magal said of an Israeli strike in Rafah in southern Gaza that killed at least 35. We now know it's 45. Um, two individuals, you know, who were basically celebrating this, likening it to celebrations around this Jewish holiday. Uh, another one retweeted another user, user's post, which showed that fire, saying happy holidays. Both have now deleted their tweets, but not before. They were shared widely across the platform with plenty of users praising the sentiment. Now, that's not to say there isn't dissent in Israel. There's dissent in Israel. That's not to say that there aren't some real um, divisions in society, particularly around the hostages. Mm -hmm. Not so much in terms of the conduct and brutality of the war. There have been some very, uh, a few very courageous voices and protesters within Israeli society. By the way, they get arrested while the people that are the psychos who are blocking aid, they don't get arrested. Let's put that aside for a moment. But most of the divisions are not about the brutality, not about the loss of uh, civilian life on the Palestinian side. It's over care and concern for the hostages, legitimate. And the growing, undeniable realization that Bibi's protestations to the contrary, he and his coalition do not give a fig about the hostages whatsoever. There was a deal on the table. If they wanted the hostages, they could institute a ceasefire, but Bibi knows that spells the end of his political lifeline. And so he has no interest in getting those hostages back and is perfectly willing to use those Israeli citizens as human sacrifices. The only question remains is uh, whether this will trigger any broader response. It's unclear. Uh, you know, the White House is assessing whether this crosses President Biden's red line. It's like, you know, it, at a certain point, just spare us. Spare us your tortured rhetoric in the press being leaked anonymously. Sure. Note that that spokesperson, that White House statement that we read everybody, that was to a background official. Jake Sullivan and the spokespeople don't even have the guts to put their own name yeah, right. to that they statement. They haven't said anything President yet. Biden, you know, and the statement itself and even the action 
It matters in the context of the broader debate around the U.S. policy, the withholding of weapons, and of the relationship of the international community. That's why, you know, we have to spend time here, not to mention the fact that it does presage and demonstrate that even this far into the war, you know, they have not developed any change to their rules of engagement, to their operational professionalism. You would think at this point, you know, the amount of, uh, the amount of combat that they've all experienced, that they maybe could have developed like different standard operating procedures. There's not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of evidence of that, especially in terms of some of the ground losses that we've seen, Crystal, the insurgency. Uh, we played some video of that previously in our last show and some crazy stuff that everybody is watching there. Yeah. Israeli kids are getting killed too, the ones who are serving in the military. And your point too about the Israeli society is important specifically with the hostages. And that's really where uh, Bibi is very vulnerable. I just saw yesterday, uh, most recent national poll of Israel, over 60% of people think that the prime, the prime objective of Israel's military campaign should be to free the hostages. And it's only that the secondary campaign should be to kill the terrorists. And that's something which is a little bit difficult for those of us here in the US to understand where you know that the baby's inaction on the hostages and the fact that so many were killed now you know by the IDF mm-hmm. at least the only ones that we know about others have been you know reported to be dead it's unclear the circumstances of their death but the stories are very prominent as well of the hostages who were released saying that they felt themselves often in danger of the bombing this stuff resonates deeply inside of Israel so it's just uh, again it's important to demonstrate a couple of things just in terms of the Israeli impunity, the way that they have their action. Yeah. It's important to demonstrate probably the fecklessness of U.S. policy and then the you know, just the smaller and smaller circle that Israel finds itself in terms of That's its That's right. Rights. I mean, think yeah. about what happened just prior to this assault on mm-hmm. displaced Palestinians in tents. You have the ICC ready to issue arrest warrants. You have the ICJ injunction. You have Biden supposedly drawing a red line, which obviously turned out to be completely uh, meaningless and doing his little virtue signal, pretending to pause one weapons shipment. You had three countries just last week, three uh, European countries come out and uh, officially recognize Palestine as a state. So you have whatever levers of international pressure there are have been pulled outside of the U.S. actually doing something and not this, you know, pretend to have a red line, but then it's not an actual red line, et cetera. So, you know, the silence is deafening from the Biden White House at this point. These are the people who, you know, rushed to put on a statement every time some kid on a college campus said something that was like a little bit off color. And now you have 45 Palestinians massacred, engulfed in flames, hundreds more injured, and not a word, not Mm -hmm. a single word. Astonishing. Hey, if you like that video, hit the like button or leave a comment below. It really helps get the show to more people. And if you'd like to get the full show ad free and in your inbox every morning, you can sign up at breakingpoints.com. That's right. Get the full show, help support the future of independent media at breakingpoints.com.